Hello, I'm Jen Grice, author of the book, You Can Survive Divorce. I am a divorce mentor and empowerment coach, guiding women to surviving and thriving after divorce. You can find out more about my ministry and my book at jengrice.com. Also get the resources, tools, and encouragement that you need to get through this foreign territory we call divorce. So today I'm gonna to be talking about dealing with harsh people or volatility after divorce and how to respond to a volatile person, a bully, or just somebody who's unkind, harsh, abrasive, um, or doesn't seem to have a filter on their attacks and unnecessary cruelty, especially after you've done plenty of abuse healing and you feel you should be able to deal with that person. On this YouTube channel, I've talked about how to respond to a narcissist after divorce, and most times we're able to go no contact which helps to work on your healing and not have to deal with these type of people. But what happens when you encounter someone who is hostile, volatile, harsh, or you deal with somebody repeatedly who's just a big bully? This could be hard to handle, especially if you've done work to create boundaries in your life, go no contact with somebody like this, separate from that kind of behavior, and yet all of a sudden it happens in your life. So first, let me remind you of what healthy relationships look like. Healthy relationships involve open communication, honesty, kindness, patience, loyalty, and respect for the other person as a human being. When a healthy person has conflict or uh, something bothers them, they're usually on a fact-finding mission uh, rather than an attack mission to harm someone else or make them feel worse about themselves. On the reverse, a toxic person does those very things. I shared on my blog recently how I encountered someone who is not using healthy communication. Actually, this person was very using very harsh, belittling, and volatile dialogue, and honestly, I wasn't prepared for how to respond. I was shocked that this person was in a position of care for other people and would treat me in such a condescending and dis disrespectful way without real reason to do so. I had done nothing wrong, nor was I even rude to this person. Of course, I'm sure this person felt they had some reason to justify their actions, but after looking at myself and my behavior, I couldn't find any good reasons to act the way this person acted. Now, I didn't wanna say anything that would make me sound like I was trying to parent this out of line person with disrespecting them back. Um, so just use common sense depending on who you're speaking to on whether you say anything at all or remain quiet. So after this encounter, I did some research and talked to several other abuse survivors to get their opinion on this topic. And here are some of the things that I've come up with or heard from others. These things may stop the volatile behavior or it may not. If it doesn't, you may need to involve others for help or safety while walking away. Here are some replies to a volatile person, especially in the moment. You could say, pardon me, can you please repeat what you just said to me? This would make them stop for a second and think about or repeat what they just said. Also, if you're unsure, you could say, did you intend to insult me with that statement? Another phrase, you do not have a right to talk to me in that manner or with that tone. Your behavior is very unbecoming. This would be good for a child or a teenager. Another one I heard was stop. This is not acceptable or this is very unprofessional. Another one is this is not normal, healthy communication. And lastly, I don't feel right about this. I'm excusing myself now. You can let this person know that you're trying to find a resolution, but belittling, disrespectful communication is not something you're going to participate in. And you'd be glad to talk to them when they're ready to talk to you in a kind and respectful manner, as I said. You wanna protect your children from seeing this type of behavior because it becomes their normal if they're around it enough. 
You want to distance yourself physically and emotionally so you don't get drawn into that kind of dysfunctional way of speaking to another human being. And most importantly, remember you're not to blame for somebody else's choices, behaviors, or how they react or respond in communication or to conflict. How someone treats you says way more about them than it says about you. It is also helpful to understand that this type of behavior is meant to be a tidal wave of emotions through the environment to control you. It puts you on shaky ground and unsure about yourself, always on the defense. When I was experiencing it, I felt controlled among other feelings. I couldn't move for fear of things would escalate even more. And I didn't know my rights as a customer or a human being to say any of those things that I mentioned. That's why it's important to know all these things before you get into these kind of situations. And if you've experienced this like I have after divorce and after healing, it's just a reminder to keep practicing those phrases. Have them on the tip of your tongue. Know what your rights are so that you're prepared for next time. See, I don't want to see volatility as normal in my life like I did growing up. I also won't excuse it away. One time is too many. We need to remember that. Anyone can choose to be unkind or even volatile. Healthy people choose kindness, patience, and peace. We can all have a bad day and be harsh from time to time, but a toxic person uses this as an excuse on a daily or weekly basis to belittle other people all the time. And in any situation, unless they know they'll be busted by someone, they don't want to know about their true self because they protect their reputation at all costs. For me and my recent situation, I think the volatile person saw me as stupid, probably an emotional woman, which I am, who over explains everything, which I do, who needed to be controlled and silenced. Instead of talking to me a kind way, asking questions or reassuring me that everything was fine, this person felt better about him or herself by accusing me of things that I didn't do and saying I was depressed when I'm not. But honestly, I was just used to that cognitive dissonance, thinking someone was a good person when they're probably not. I grew up justifying harsh, cruel behavior as my fault or just a bad day for them. See, toxic people will use this against you. They think you gave me a break the one time I was cruel, you minimized it, and you allowed it to happen. So they'll continue to treat you in the very same way. They also see that they can gaslight you and you easily are swayed to believe them. When I stated I was felt I was being attacked, this person tried to tell me that I wasn't. Didn't matter how the words were attacking in nature, this person was going to tell me that I was wrong in my thinking, which is gaslighting. I wasn't allowed to see things differently. If I did, I was wrong. The main thing I keep reminding myself about this entire situation, although this hurt me, brought up old wounds, and I felt like damaged good, this person's behavior was about them and their problems, not about me. I didn't say anything nasty back to this person, and this person was way out of line and it wasn't my fault. So I hope you learn to not take what others say about you or to you, especially when it's not true personally. A healthy person doesn't attack people. They don't need to. They try to understand and come to a resolution that everybody can agree with. So in the next couple of videos, I'm going to be talking about cognitive dissonance and am I a narcissist or a toxic person magnet, a question I hear often. So I hope today's video was encouraging and empowered to you. Remember to use those phrases and be ready to say them when you uh, encounter a volatile person. Uh, but if you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to answer any questions you have in upcoming videos. And if you like this type of video and want to see more, I'm working on creating a Stronger Woman After Divorce online course. And I hope to have it completed by this fall of 2019. If that's something that would interest you, please let me know. You could just leave a comment below. Hope to see you in the next video. God bless.